interpretation of statutes and why is it necessary. There are four sources of English law. Well, used to be, as EC law won't be a source of English law after Brexit. Uh, but there used to be four main sources, case law, parliamentary legislation, EC law and the European Convention on Human Rights. As you know, European Convention on Human Rights was brought into the UK law under the Human Rights Act 1998. So it won't be wrong if we say that the main sources of English law now are case law, parliamentary legislation and the Human Rights Act 1998, although it is a parliamentary legislation, but the fountain is European Convention on Human Rights. Due to the democratic principles, it is the Parliament's job to make laws and it is for the courts to interpret them. Remember that the courts and the judges are not lawmakers. The constitutional principles of separation of powers require the courts to interpret the laws made by the executive and the legislature. In the case of Dewport Steels Limited against Sirs, Lord Diplock put this principle in the following words, Parliament makes the laws, the judiciary interpret them. When Parliament legislates to remedy what the majority of its members at the time perceive to be a defect or a lacuna in the existing law, whether it be the written law enacted by existing statutes or the unwritten common law, as it has been expounded by the judges in decided cases, the role of the judiciary is confined to ascertaining from the words that Parliament has approved as expressing its intention, what that intention was, and to giving effect to it. Where the meaning of the statutory words is plain and unambiguous, it is not for the judges to invent fancied ambiguities as an excuse for failing to give effect to its plain meaning, because they themselves consider that the consequences of doing, doing so would be inexpedient or even unjust or immoral. In controversial matters, such as are involved in industrial relations, there is room for differences of opinion as to what is expedient, what is just, and what is morally justifiable. Under our constitution, it is Parliament's opinion on these matters that is paramount. Lord Diplock also stated, if this be the case, it is for Parliament, not for the judiciary, to decide whether any changes should be made to the law as stated in the Act. In the same case, Lord Scarman stated, if Parliament says one thing but means another, it is not, under the historic principles of the common law, for the courts to correct it. We are to be governed not by Parliament's intentions, but by Parliament's enactments. <laughs> 